Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth video in this series of videos on wired and wireless networks. Uh, today we're going to be looking at network hardware. Alright, so what is our objective today? We're going to learn about all the different hardware that is required for networking. And that means you should be able to identify the main hardware required by a computer network and be able to explain the differences between a hub and a switch two important pieces of equipment that we'll spend a bit of detail looking at later. So network hardware. A variety of hardware is required to set up and run a network. I think we know that. And the type of hardware you need to be able to describe at GCSE level includes cables, which we've already had a little bit of a look at previously. We need to know about hubs and switches. We need to know about routers. And we need to know about network interface cards, NICs. We need to know about wireless access points, WAPs. And of course, on top of that, you're going to need different nodes, different devices to connect together. And that's things we're familiar with like PCs, tablets, printers, etc. So let's start with our network interface card. It's often referred to as a NIC. And this enables a computer device to be, computed, to be connected to a network. So again, I'm saying computer device, not just a computer, any sort of equipment that can be connected to a network requires a network interface card. With modern computers, usually one is included as part of the circuitry on the motherboard. But in the past, network interface cards used to be separate devices like this. This is an old style one that you would use to connect your desktop computer to a network. So you can say there we've got the Ethernet socket there for you to plug the Ethernet cable into. You'd also maybe it'd be a wireless one as well. And you'd put this in your desktop and that would allow you to connect your computer to a network. Nowadays, these are always included as part of the motherboard or usually included, but sometimes you might need to buy a separate one. And this is not just true of big box PCs. Most laptops or mobile devices will have a wireless network interface card built in. And this is how your phone or your tablet connects to a network. It connects wirelessly because it's got a wireless NIC built into the circuitry inside the phone or the tablet. Each NIC has what we call a media access control or MAC address. So nothing to do with Apple Mac computers. A MAC address is a media access control address, and this is unique to each card so that a device can be identified on a network and data can be sent to a correct device. So a MAC address is all about finding a computer device on a local area network. Each network interface card has its own MAC address, and that means each computer device can be located on a local area network. So moving on from network interface cards, let's look at hubs and switches because these are two similar devices that are quite easily confused. So what do hubs and switches do? These connect several nodes together on a wired network to enable communication to take place. So we use these on local area networks, on wired connections, and you can see here there are lots and lots of ethernet sockets and you can use this to plug all the computers together in that section of the LAN so that they can communicate. So for example, in my school classroom, I think there's 32, 33 computers. There's a big switch at the back there and all the ethernet cables from all the computers are connected together on the switch. And it's a bit like one of these. However, Although hubs and switches can look very similar and their functionality is very similar, they do work a little differently. So that's what we're going to look at now. A hub sends data packets to every node it is connected to. So think about it. This means that when you send data and you're using a hub to connect all your computers together, that data gets sent to every single device connected to the hub. So if we go back to the previous slide, you could say maybe this is a hub, there's 30 computers connected up to it. 
if you're sending an email or some data, that gets sent to every single computer that's connected to the hub. So this means that the data has to be filtered by the receiving device to see whether it's intended for that device. So that data gets sent to every single computer connected to the hub, and each computer needs to look at that and go, is that meant for me? Yes, I can receive it. No, I'll ignore it. So clearly that's going to create some security problems. So hubs are sometimes referred to as dumb devices. They're not intelligent. They take a packet of data, a set of ones and zeros, and they just send that to every computer they're connected to. However, a switch is a bit more smart or intelligent. The data packets received by the switch are examined for their destination address, that's the MAC address, and then are sent to the node which is connected to the recipient device. So it looks at the data, where is it meant for, and sends it only to that computer. So the switch doesn't send it to every single computer that's connected to it, it just sends it to the one node that requires it. If you look at a diagram there just to help illustrate that, so if you look at a hub first of all, this computer is sending data, it reaches the hub, and the hub is a dumb device, it just sends it to every single computer. So if this is the computer that wants the data, it will receive it, but then the other computers have to remember to filter out that data because it's not meant for them. Again, it's a dumb device, it just blindly sends those data packets to every single computer. With a switch, on the other hand, a computer sends the data, and the switch reads it and looks, aha, I know the destination address, I know which computer this is meant for, and sends it directly to that computer. The other computers connected to it do not get sent the data. So again, that's a little illustration of the difference between a hub and a switch. Hubs are dumb, switches are smart. So hubs are not secure as every node can view data, whether it's intended for them or not. So that's a security problem. You don't want anybody else reading your emails. There's also a high risk of data collision. A data collision is when two or more computers send data packets at the same time. They crash together just like two cars driving down a road hitting into each other and that data can be lost. Switches are more secure as they only send the data to the intended node. There's less risk of data collisions because it's, you don't have so much data being transmitted down the network but potentially switches are more expensive. So again, we have a little table here. This just goes through the difference. You can pause, make some notes if you want, take a look through this. So hubs and switches connect together wired networks. But for a wireless network, we need a wireless access point, sometimes referred to as a WAP or WAP, and this connects Wi-Fi devices to your wired network without using physical cables. So this means you can use your laptop or you can use your smartphone or your tablet or even a desktop computer that's using Wi-Fi to your network without having to use cables. So as long as people are within range of the WAP, they can move from room to room and still be able to access the network. Like hubs, WAPs broadcast the data to every device connected to the Wi-Fi network. So when it sends out the data, it's not sending it out just to one device, it is sent out on, the, on a radio wave and it can be listened, that, that data can be intercepted by any device that's connected to the wireless access point. So obviously this is a security risk as anybody connected to the network can access the data. That's why we use a lot of encryption and other technology with wireless. The bandwidth of a wireless network is also less than a wired network. So this is often why, for example, in a computer lab at a school or a university, all the computers are wired together because a wired ethernet connection has a greater bandwidth than a wireless access point. Also, wireless signals are more prone to interference, signal, signal de, de, sorry, I'm getting all very tongue twisted, or signal degradation than a wired connection. And we look at that more in other videos. 
All right, so we've looked at a series of boxes here. We've looked at hubs, we've looked at switches, we've looked at wireless access points. Here's another box. And these all look very similar, don't they? This time we're going to look at a router or a router, depending uh, what type of English you're speaking, British English or American English. I'm going to call it a router. If you want to call it a router, that's fine. Spelling is the same. A router is a device that connects different networks together. So, for example, it might connect a LAN to a wide area network. So, for example, you need a router to connect your home or office local area network to the Internet. So this is not like a hub or a switch, which are all about connecting together computers on a local area network. What a router does, it connects one network to another network, typically a local area network to a wide area network. Routers read a data packet's IP address, not the MAC address, and uses this to route the data to its destination by the fastest available path. So remember, a MAC address is all about local area networks. As we mentioned before in previous videos, an IP address, the Internet Protocol address, is for identifying computer devices on a wide area network such as the internet. So routers are using the IP address, not the MAC address, to route that data across the internet or from wide area network to wide area network. So let's have a look at a kind of simple diagram here just to show you some of the difference between these devices. So you can see over here we've got a cluster of PCs. Maybe this is one room of PCs in a school and they're all connected together using a switch. And then we've got some more computer hardware, maybe in the admin office or something like that. And again, these are all connected together using a switch. So they connected into the same local area network. We've got a wireless access point, sometimes referred to as a Wi-Fi router. And this is connecting together all the different mobile devices to the wired network. They're connected wirelessly, but the Wi-Fi router is plugged into the wired network, so all the devices communicate together and then we've got a router and this router is connecting your local area network to the wide area network that is the internet so you see the switches which could also be hubs are connecting together groups of computers on the local area network the Wi-Fi router is allowing your Wi-Fi devices to connect wirelessly to the rest of the wired network and then you've got your router which is connecting the whole local area network to the internet. So let's just go through that one more time because it can be a little bit confusing. Especially as on a home network, the router, the switch, and the wireless access point are often just combined into one device. And I know this sometimes confuses my students because they'll say, hey teacher, I've only got one box at home and it does everything. Why are you talking about routers and switches and wireless access points? Why are you making it confusing? Okay, so again, on a small network, you might use one device that has multiple functionality that can act as a router, a switch, or a wireless access point. However, on larger networks, think a big office, big corporation, you'll often use separate devices. Okay, so at home, you're just using one device that has multifunctionality. However, in larger networks, you're going to use a lot of separate devices. So hubs and switches connect wired devices together on a local area network. Wireless access points connect wireless devices on a local area network. Your router connects different types of network together. For example, your home LAN to the internet. And we're just going to do a little bit about cables as well. I know we've covered this before, but it's always worth just repeating key information here. Network cables are used to join individual nodes together on a local area network. We often refer to these as Ethernet cables. Uh, they're made, usually made from copper. They support the Ethernet standards, and they're different types of Ethernet cable. We've got, for example, CAT5, which supports a speed of up to 1 gigabit per second, whereas you've got CAT6, which supports up to 10 gigabits per second. Obviously, CAT6 is going to cost a little more, so when you're setting up the network, 
the network administrator needs to think about what speed is required, what's the bandwidth. Using cables in a network is otherwise known as a wired connection. So a wired connection uses cables. Pretty simple. If you're using Wi-Fi, then that's called a wireless connection. Wired connection uses cable. Wireless connection uses Wi-Fi. If you're connecting networks together over a longer distance, if we're talking about wide area networks and joining different wide area networks together, we use fiber optic cables now. These can transmit at a higher bandwidth than copper cables for a longer distance without losing signal strength. So for example, all the undersea cables that connect together all the different continents of the world. So we have a look at that on the next slide. Here's a map of the major fiber optic connections around the world. These are all undersea cables. And these connect all the different wide area networks of the world together under the ocean to connect different countries together. So you can see there's a lot of fiber optic cables connecting the United States and Europe, or indeed connecting Asia under the Pacific to America. And this is how you can send data around the world. All right, and let's just do a quick summary here, guys. So network interface card enables a computer device to be connected to a network. Hubs and switches connect wired devices together on a local area network. Wireless access point connects wireless devices to your local area network. Your router or router connects different types of network together. And we've got cables. Ethernet cables are commonly used to connect local area networks together. Whereas we use fiber optic cables to connect wide area networks together. For example, the big undersea cables that we use to connect Europe to America. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Lots of different types of hardware here. Uh, I'll see you again next week for the next video.